Hey guys, it's Dave. Today we're going to talk about a condition that's been around for many, many, many years, but we just started to see a resurgence of it in the last three, and that is Bell's palsy. It's a condition that causes sudden, out of the blue, weakness in the muscles on one side of the face. You'll get a half smile, maybe an eye drop, and uh, you can see drooling with it. One eye may close altogether. You can see facial drooping as well. Pain in the, in the ear on that side of the face or in the jaw can also occur, as well as headache. You will see an increase in sound sensitivity. So the slightest sounds can suddenly just set you off. You're, it will be very loud in your ears and not only loud, but irritating to you on the affected side. So if it occurs on the right, it'll be your right ear that'll do it to you. You'll see a loss of taste in your mouth. You will see a decrease in saliva as well as tears, which is one of the main issues that you'll deal with is that side of the face, that eye will be prone to having things like uh, dry eye infection, and, and possibly even loss of vision or altered vision if you don't take care of it. Rarely, it can occur on both sides. Generally, it will be one, but sometimes, very few times, you can see it happening on both sides of the, of the face. It can occur at any age, young or old, you can see. The exact cause of Bell's palsy is unknown. However, it's related to getting a viral infection. So things like herpes, either oral, like mouth, you know, cold sores or genital, chicken pox or the shingles, same thing, vi same virus there, mononucleosis, uh, cytomegalovirus can set it off, mumps or the measles. So if you're dealing mainly in children in that, that can be something that sets it off. Influenza, particularly influenza B as in boy. Hand, foot, and mouth disease, which I've had that personally, and it's no fun, but that affects children all the way up. That can set it off. Severe respiratory viral infections can set it off. Mild ones, not so much, but severe ones can do it. So that would include something like COVID. And so you want to be aware of th that situation afterwards. But what happens is the nerve that actually controls the muscle in your face passes through a small uh, orifice in the bone. When it becomes inflamed due to the virus actually occurring, it can actually get pinched off as it's passing through that area in the bone because the nerve becomes inflamed, it's swollen, and it cuts off that as it goes through there, causing the paralysis on the side of the face. Some of the other risk factors that, that can you can be more prone to getting Bell's palsy is pregnancy. If you're, especially in your third trimester, you can see a more likelihood than in the first and second. Like I said, upper respiratory infections, especially if you're prone to them, that you'll be more prone to seeing Bell's palsy. Diabetes, if you're overweight or if you have hypertension or high blood pressure, that can set you off as well. Rarely does it reoccur. If you get it once, you're generally not going to get it more than once in a lifetime. But if, if you do see a reoccurrence, you want to check out your family history. If you've got grandparents or parents or aunts or uncles that have had it and had it reoccur more than once in their lifetime, you're going to have a greater likelihood of it happening to you as well. It generally will go away without treatment in around a month. Doesn't make it any less comfortable for you, but it generally goes away in around a month. The complications that you can see with it though are irreversible damage to the facial nerve where you may get some facial drooping, maybe your half smile, maybe your eye drooping that will not go away. The other thing that may occur is your nerve fibers can grow back 
wrong. And what I mean by that is when you close this eye, you may get a half smile on this side. Or if you smile here, the eye that was affected may close. It, it's kind of a cattywampus type, type thing where half of the side of the face will be affected by this side if that's what occurred. And, and that is an example that can happen with that. The other thing, like I said, with your eyes, and that's why it is so important to take care of that eye, because your eye may not shut. You may see alterations in your vision, including blindness. And it's just due to the scratchiness because your eye won't shut. It gets extremely dry if you rub it. So you've got to make sure you're not rubbing your eyes you use a good moisturizing eye drop and at night cover it with a patch. Get an eye patch to cover it to protect it from the dryness as well as any particles dust that could get into that eye. A good eye ointment, a lubricating ointment would be good to put in at night. Again, like I said, treatment, it will resolve on its own fully with or without doing any treatments. However, some have been prescribed corticosteroids like prednisone to help reduce the inflammation of the nerve. Antivirals like acyclovir and valcyclovir have been tried with not great results. They're basically just trying to cure or to clear up the viral infection that caused the Bell's palsy. However, physical therapy can do wonders with you if you happen to get it. Work with a physical therapist. They got some different um, exercises, facial exercises that can help you out. Most importantly, if you ever get one side of your face or both sides of your face that go numb, that droop, you get a half smile, you get a drooping eyelid or your eye closes, rather than just try and write it out thinking, oh, it may be Bell's palsy or it may be something else, immediately get to a doctor or an emergency room because it could be a stroke. And with stroke, the quicker you're there, the better chances you will have getting it treated and recovering from it because minutes are important with brain function in stroke. So if you ever feel that numbness or you get that, that uh, droop going in the face, get to an emergency room as soon as possible or call 911.